All right, so in my recent KISS videos where I took a look at KISS versus Beta Flight, some of the feedback was, well, he just doesn't know how to tune. Well, I can assure you, I do know how to tune, and I looked at this in quite a few ways. The couple of flights that people saw were just the final product. I try to keep videos under 20 minutes, generally. If you wanted me to show all the content, it'd be like a four hour video. So with all that, I kind of distilled things down, but tonight we're gonna take a little closer look and look at some of the iterations that I did do and talk about the PIDs that I did use for the final KISS tune. And my hope for this video is if you're flying KISS, it will kind of open your horizons a little bit to not worry about what people deem as crazy numbers and just listen to the quad. And if it you move a number a certain direction and it flies better, just go with it. They're just numbers. It really matters is what flies better. So today we're gonna to talk about using some normal numbers and then some crazy numbers. And you can see what I chose for the final product uh, for the KISS flights. Okay, so to jump right into it, these are the PID gains I use for that final KISS flight. Uh, you can see 6P just kept the roll and pitch the same and then 30 Ds. And 30 is as high as it will go in KISS. If you set it to 31, it won't go any higher. I also had the low pass filters set to high. The next highest thing is off. I did try off and at 30 Ds, it uh, was jittery. You'd get those like those twitchy jerks and jitters. So that wouldn't work for that high of PID gains, but the higher PID gains did work better. I also then did flights where the Ds and the P terms were down more around the normal numbers, which is around four and a half for P and 14 and a half to 16 for D. And in that scenario, we ran with the low pass filter off. And then in that scenario, uh, low pass filters being off were okay. It didn't provide any of the weird twitches or anything like that. Under the advanced tab in both flights, I did the D set point weight of 100 and the adaptive filter was enabled. The other tune I tested out was with, you can see here, 4.2 for the P term on pitch, 4.8 for roll, and 14.5 on a D term for roll, and then pitch 16.5. And you can see the, the all terms there as well. Now doing the flights, uh, and I'm gonna roll the footage here in just a little bit, you'll see that uh, you know the one with the higher D gains was better for prop wash. And if you really look close, you can see some, you know, bounce back and overshooting on the one with the lower pits. That's because the P to D ratio was a little too high. So it's pretty straightforward what I mean for P to D ratio. If you take six divided by 30, you're gonna get 0.2. Whereas if you take 4.2 divided by 14.5, you're gonna get more like 0.3. That means that the P is a little higher in ratio to the dampening. So you can see here in that scenario, we're getting this little bit of overshoot here, where in this one, we do not have any overshooting going on. Now it's important to recognize these PIDs are not gonna work on every quad. It's specific for the quad, the test quad I had. But knowing that I ran through these iterations that, hey, my P to D ratio, that I was getting overshooting and bounce back, with those, the higher P term in relation to D term, I knew I had to increase the D term or lower the P term a little bit, whatever. I needed to bring those into ratio. And then after that, I just moved the D and P up together until I could get to the max D gain I could have uh, in KISS to have the peak prop wash performance. And as long as I was getting smooth, steady flight and there was no downsides to that, then uh, obviously that's, that's what I want to have is the least amount of prop wash. Again, if you try these on your quad that has a little bit more power versus the moment of inertia of the rig, you might get fluttery D term. So it's, you know, it's a customized tune for this, but I use that same process and procedure for the same thing for tuning beta flight. So it's the same kind of iterations and going through and you're kind of listening to the machine to, to get to those, those points that where it's kind of talking back to you and saying, Hey, you know, I'm getting bounce back. I'm not getting bounce back. This is, you know, that, that, ratio between the two, okay, move on. How high can you move the P and D term up together? Now with this quad, you do get to a spot where the motors just can't update any faster. You know, they reach kind of their performance level. Motors themselves are like a mechanical low pass filter. They can only update so fast, you know, for the specific motor. If you put a more powerful motor on here, it has more torque, then it can update faster for, you know, fluttering uh, to compensate for prop wash performance, but you will get just to a physical limit where that's as close as this quad's gonna get. So when people were saying, well, my KISS quad gets better prop wash performance, it's like, well, 
that's because it's not this quad. You know, this is not meant to be this $900 quad. This is a fairly inexpensive quad. And what we're trying to do is, you know, I don't want awesome performing mechanical equipment on a test rig because I've got to be honest, if you have a $900 quad, it's going to fly great on any firmware. So it doesn't really test the firmware. You want to have something that's more common. You know, these are just RCX motors, you know, HQ props. They're all kinds of dinged and beat, beat to hell. It's not, you know, there's the dents and chips in here. So it's nothing super special. Uh, no, ESCs are not special on here, anything else. So it's really just testing this against some kind of beat, tried and true equipment that works fine, but it's again, not the cream of the crop, but it's not the worst either. The, the noise performance on this is pretty good. The other thing I wanted to address is the notion that maybe I tune just for stick tracking and not necessarily for prop rocks performance. That's not true. You tune for both. Uh, stick tracking is the quad following your sticks, you know, following your inputs. That's, you know, the closer that is. Uh, obviously, if your quad's exactly following right on your sticks, that's actually really locked. If it's something different that you're kind of used to, that might be your version of locked, but technically it's not locked, um, which is fine, but there's a difference and you have to notice that. The concept of moving up your PND gains together to as high as they can be where you don't get you know bad reactions like fluttering props or things of that nature, hot motors, that's what we do. That's what I did with you know moving those PND gains all the way up. The highest you can get on the D gains was 30. The highest I could get and get is six because like I just talked about, if I would have moved the P gains up any higher, you get the overshooting because it you could see around that 0.2 was the magic number there for the P to D ratio for this quad uh, for KISS. Okay, so enough of the Ameren. Without further ado, here's the two flights where I looked at uh, in the lower PIDs and the higher PIDs. Uh, looked at those with uh, a gentleman that uh, is a KISS advocate and he was saying, yeah, he thought the higher PID one uh, was better. I thought the same thing, even though we kind of thought like, hey, those are kind of crazy PIDs. It's like, hey man, if it looks better in the HD, let's go with what looks better. And he's like, yeah, that's what, that's what looked better. So let's go with that. And that's what I went with. So um, if you thought those PIDs were high and are crazy, well, the alternative was I could have showed a worse performing flight uh, footage and I didn't think that would be fair uh, or represent, uh, representative of what uh, the firmware could do. So with that, here's the lower PIDs and then the higher PIDs. Uh, thanks everybody for tuning back. And I will be sure to get on to other, back to other content. I know I've been doing a lot of stuff on the KISS, but there was a lot of stuff that I was time invested, so I wanted to show that. I do have a follow-up here. I do have now KISS ESC, so that will be on the testing block. But I'm going to hit some other things first, just because uh, this is not just a KISS versus Betaflight comparison channel. But hopefully uh, I did go into the details enough that you thought it was uh, worthwhile content. Again, thanks everybody for your time, and I hope this helped. Here's the footage.